with the context of Matthew 24, uh, it is not church age doctrine. Though the Christian today runs to Matthew 25 and says, ooh, the, the earthquake in, in Greece, Jesus is coming. Yeah, Jesus is coming, but it has nothing to do with the earthquake in Greece or New York or Niagara Falls freezing up. Matter of fact, nothing of America has anything to do with Bible prophecy. It's all about Israel. So when we come out of the conclusion of Matthew 24, we are looking at the nation of Israel, Matthew is looking at the nation of Israel, Jesus as king of the Jews. We move into chapter 25, and we are going back into the tribulation period. Because Matthew 25 is you'll get some churches, and I'm bending them, they'll run to these virgins and say, you know, the, the Christian. You can spiritualize Matthew 25 to limitations. But you cannot say that these virgins are the church. And I'll show you where and how and why. <clears throat> then shall the kingdom of heaven, that's the millennium. That's the birds and the trees and the skunks and the kangaroos hopping and moving around. The, the throne of Jesus Christ shall be likened unto ten virgins, plural. The church is one virgin to be married to Jesus. We are not virgins. We're to be a chaste virgin, Paul says. And I'm not Paul-only-ism. I am talking about the church, and I'm going to run to the Pauline epistles. And when we run about the Jews, I'll run to the scriptures of the Jews. And we're talking about the heathen, we'll run to the scripture of the heathen. The church is not virgins. It's a virgin. Which took their lamps. All right. They took their lamps. Revelation 1. Now, you, I'm going to do, and I do something that churches don't do. I am going to run you through the scriptures. And I'm not going to say, you know, we will look at the scriptures. I ain't going to say, all right, Revelation 1, 20, first Peter 5, 7, and, and because you're not going to go home. You're not going to sit home. You're not going to examine the scriptures as you should. So I'm putting them up on the screen. I know Facebook, you can't see it. But our YouTube videos, you can see me with the scripture. You get the Bible and you get my ugly face. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are seven golden candlesticks. And, excuse me, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Uh, Matthew took their lamps. We're candlesticks. We're not lamps. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. We don't meet the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. We don't meet him. We marry him. A bride, in many most cases, will not meet her husband the day they get married. She's meeting him a long time ago. I met my 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 groom, the Lord Jesus Christ, April 25th, 1987. That's when I met Jesus. The five of them were wise. And the five were foolish. Okay, you can say a Christian. You know, five were wise. And five, I mean, there are many foolish Christians that are Christians. There are many that are wise. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now, oil in the Bible is a type of Holy Spirit. And if you're saying the five foolish had no oil or ran out of oil, what you're saying is either the Holy Spirit is not with them or they lost the Holy Spirit and they're lost. Either case. That's not a Christian. 
When the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you on this side of Calvary, he seals you up. He ain't leaving you. He ain't going to forsake you. He's with you forever. Even if you are foolish. Even if you are worldly. If you are saved and you are a child of God, that Holy Spirit runs in you, lives in you, guides you, hopefully. He's not going to run out. This is an Old Testament philosophy showing up in the tribulation. The Holy Spirit came and went off the people. Look at the life of Solomon. I mean, not Solomon, uh, Samson. One moment he's got the Holy Spirit. Next minute he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Here it is here. Here's the Old Testament in Matthew 25, which we're talking about the tribulation period. That's why you guys study the Old Testament. Because you might want to build an ark in America and say it's spiritual. Where'd you get that notion? Noah didn't charge cash, check, or money order. Okay? So there were foolish that took their lands, took no oil, type of the Holy Spirit. We looked at the fig tree last night. The, the oil is the type of the Holy Spirit. And they didn't take the Holy Spirit, they're not saved. So it can't be the church. But the wise took their oil and their vessels with their lamps. Okay, so. While, okay, now when we're looking at these, these foolish and wise uh, virgins, there is a doctrinal belief of the Catholics. There's a doctrinal belief different of the Eastern Orthodox. There's a doctrinal difference of the Mormons. And there is a doctrinal difference of the Baptist Church about these ten virgins. Because I have been in a Baptist Church that this was preached, it's, it's Christians. Okay, he may have been spiritually preaching, but it's not. And if I'm going to, if I ever would preach something like this, I would definitely give a warning throughout the entire message. This is not the church. This is Israel. I'm spiritualizing this passage. But what message could you get for a Christian out of this? You either got oil or you don't. All right, you run over the book of Acts and it says, you know, to be filled with the Spirit. Well, you can't be filled if you have no, no oil. You either got the oil or you don't have the oil. Either you got the Holy Spirit or you don't have the Holy Spirit. I am a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. And when I'm going to give a message or I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to study my Bible, or I go to the Sunday school lesson, or I go to church service, I will ask the Holy Spirit to fill me. Not come in me. He's already in me. I will ask the Holy Spirit to become awakened in me that my ears may hear, my mouth may shut or speak when I'm supposed to, and my heart be filled. If I ever ran out of oil, if I never brought the oil, I'm not saved. So this is one of the reasons why when you run to Matthew 24 and Matthew 25, this is another reason why there are people in the Baptist church that don't have no security. Of their salvation. When you tamper with the context. Study shall thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't rightly divide Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. And put it on the Christian. It's wrong. And I already told you. You got the Catholics. You got the, the Eastern Orthodox. You got the Mormons. And you got the, they all got their different beliefs on who these who these virgins are. They are Jewish people in the tribulation under law and faith in Jesus. They are like Samson. They either have the spirit or they don't have the spirit or the spirit will come upon them or the spirit will leave them. Samson, when he died of suicide, Catholic Church says it's a forbidden sin. You'll go to hell. 
Samson died with the spirit of God in him. When he died, he prayed to God that he would get the victory. And the Holy Spirit came in on him. And he died in the Holy Spirit. And he's in heaven. King Saul did not have the Holy Spirit when he died. And he's burning in hell today. Jonathan. That's one of those ones. Where is he? How did he die? He died with Saul, a God-rejecting, foolish, not listening to the word of God, where he could have been with David. Had he stayed with David instead of going with his father, he would have had a position in royalty. I don't know where Jonathan went. I know where I'm going when I die. And if you profess to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you profess salvation, you're born again. I know where you're going when you die. And I don't care if you die as a murderer. I don't care if you commit adultery. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. But if you're saved and you die in sin, you're going to face that sin at the judgment seat of Christ. You ain't going to lose. The Holy Spirit is signed, sealed, and delivered of you. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is like God taking your soul, putting it in the envelope, licking the envelope, sealing the envelope, and stocking the envelope where nobody can touch it. Not even Satan. So, but the wise took oil in their vessels and lamps. While the bridegroom tarried. Up to three and a half years. Up to seven years. Because I said, you say three and a half, there's a rapture in the tribulation period. And then there's the seven years. That's Jesus Christ. He's still the bridegroom, even though he's not the, the bride of, of Israel. The bride of Israel is God Jehovah. God Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty's bride is Israel. His city is Jerusalem. Jesus' bride is the church. His city is New Jerusalem. Don't get the two mixed up. There are two people, Jews and Christians. And here we go into the, to the, uh, the Trinity. <laughs> and the Trinity that's one splits again. And when we read all these, these parables about, you know, sending out, inviting them to the wedding and all that, the wedding's not Jews. It's Christ and his bride. But God, for, so, for God so loved the world, God loves his people. He sent his son. He came unto his own. They only received them not. The bridegroom tarried, and they slumbered and slept. Well, we read in 24 about that, that, that servant that was faithful and he did right. Then we read about that servant that didn't do right. And oh, the Lord Terry, I'm going to beat everybody up and I'm going to go to sleep and I'm not going to watch. If the Lord comes during the, the, the lie of the scene church chase, as he will, he's going to find many sleeping Christians. Both the physical and the spiritual. What's the physical? He's going to call them up from the graveyard. They're sleeping. And then he's going to find Christians who are saved on this earth. And they're just sleeping. They ain't doing nothing. Now, according to this parable. Those that are, if you're going to put the church in. Those that are sleeping and not doing anything will go to hell. Really? You would not hear your typical Baptist church say that, but with this day and age, who knows? But if you're going to run to Matthew 24, you're going to run to Matthew 25, and this is the Christians, this is the church age, this is the error you get. If you are a sleeping Christian, you're running to Matthew 25 in the church age, the last of seeing church age, if you're a sleeping Christian, you don't do nothing, you don't have the Holy Spirit, and you're not going up when the rapture comes. Two were in the field, one was taken, one was left behind. Uh, two was grinding at the meal, one was taken. You see what I mean? 
That is never the Christian. Run back to Matthew 1 on your own. This is the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, and the line of the kings of Israel, Judah. Not presidents. According to the Bible, the way the Bible, you're going to lose your president of the United States one day. Two ways. This country is going to fold terribly and disappear. Or we're going to be conquered and we're going to be taken by a kingdom. And I gave you the other night, there are nations today, I forgot what the number was, I, I gave it the other night. Uh, there are 43 sovereign nations right now in the world that have kings in royalty. Who knows? Maybe King Charles III or one of his sons may just say, you know what? We want America back. And God says, you know what? That filthy nation doesn't want anything to do with me. They don't even know what sex they are. They're killing the babies and all that. Go get them. You don't, I don't know. I would love to have the British come. My family comes from, comes from England. During the Revolutionary War against, against England, I would have been the one of the supporters of England. You don't like me? Oh, well. King and royalty is more in the Bible than presidents. And your voting in, in your nation is not working to what the Bible has it to be. If you think it is, you're just lying to yourself. You're mad at me because I speak the truth against America and the flag or not? You don't know what the truth is. I have become your enemy. So the bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slept. In the church age, the bridegroom is away. Jesus is away. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne. I can show you videos off my face to page presently. There are Christians out there preaching on the street. There are Christians passing out gospel tracts. I try to do what I can with gospel tracts. I try to do what I can on Facebook. There's a Christian that opens up his Bible and he witnesses the Christian. Don't you tell me we're asleep. We say what five were, uh, five were, was it ten? Yeah, five were wise. Look at verse five again. Read it. They all slumbered and slept. Not not the five foolish, all ten of them. Not all the church is slumbering. Though it's going to go in worse apostasy. And there will be still Christians when the church is folded up. I believe it's going to fold up. The meeting houses and all that is going to go. I believe that's going to happen. But there still will be Christians out there trying to get the Bible, trying to get the gospel, trying to get gospel tracts. And at midnight, there was a cry made. So everybody says Jesus is coming at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out and meet him. The cry is at midnight. It didn't say Jesus came at midnight. And those, and those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. You're not going to get up right away and be able to trim your lips. You're going to rub your hair, rub the, the, the dust out of your eye and that. It's not at midnight. So there's a hymn out there, the midnight cry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then wait a minute. In chapter 24, verse 36, but of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Don't say, don't sing the midnight hour. Because you don't know. The cry was at midnight. There's 144,000 Jewish apostolates out there preaching and teaching. That might be the midnight cry. It takes them a long time to go all through the land of Israel, the Jews. 
Behold, the bridegroom cometh. That may be the message of the 144,000. That would be a perfect gospel message of the kingdom. What's the good news? The bridegroom's coming. Get up. Get ready. At what time? I don't know. It says the midnight, the cry. Midnight, the cry. It didn't say Jesus came at midnight. Get it right. Read it right. You know how to read English. You don't need the Hebrew. You don't need the Greek. You can't handle the English. And don't get yourself a modern Bible of Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Anus, Anus, Westcott, and Horace. Get yourself a King James 1611 Bible and read it to how Jesus and God wanted it. It's not Jesus at the midnight cry. It's someone making a cry. Now, the church, when the trump is blown, guess what? The dead in Christ rise first. How long does it to the, those that are alive and, and remain? Who knows? It says in Thessalonians, the dead in Christ shall, ra shall, shall, shall rise, and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together in them in the cloud. There's a gap. There's a gap here. What's the gap? I don't know, and I'm not going to tell you I know, because I have no idea, because I'm not the father. Then all the virgins arose, pl virgins, plural again, not one, and trimmed their lamps. I don't know what's going to happen when, when the church, when the rapture happens, and you get carnal living Dead Christians. I don't mean dead in the grave. I mean, they just don't do nothing. They're not going to call on the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to. They're going to be upset. that They're going to miss the football. They didn't get to go and Mickey Matt ran. She didn't ever met the guy she was going to marry. He didn't get a chance to preach that well, great message he was going to preach. And the foolish said to the wise, give us our, give us your oil. I cannot give you my Holy Spirit that's in me. It's not mine to give. It's God. And if you don't have the holy oil of God, the Holy Spirit, going to another human being, going to another Christian, if you're going to put it to the church. I cannot, your pastor cannot, your Christian friend cannot, your Christian mother cannot give you the Holy Spirit. That has to come from God. And it only comes by faith and belief in Jesus. If you want to run this chapter to the church. This Oil is olive oil. It's used as the oil for the lights. It pictures the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus is telling us is half the nation has oil, has the Holy Spirit. Half the nation doesn't. Two are in the field. One is taken. One's left behind. Two is working at the mill. One is taken. One's left behind. That is not the church. That is the, the, the spiritual condition of Israel. Half of them are doing right. Half of them are not. With Matthew 24. And you can't run the boat to the church age. But the wise answer is saying, not so. At least there be not enough for us and you. Are you telling me the Holy Spirit is limited? Oh, preacher, I can't give you enough of the Holy Spirit to preach that message. You say that to William Cartwright. You say that to uh, uh, Moody. You say that to Hiles. You say that to Ruckman. You you say that to Mo uh, that's what he said, Moody. Uh, um, William Booth. You say that to Billy Sunday. You say that to Bob Jones Sr. 
Well, you know, you guys, you guys are preaching, but I, I can't give you full Holy Spirit today. You're crazy. Now, a way you can give the Holy Spirit of you to another. You preach the gospel to them. They get saved. They don't get the Holy Spirit from you. They get it from God. Then they can be filled. It's not you. Now, I know you're Baptist. And I put a post today on Facebook. I think it was today or yesterday. When we get to heaven, we're not going to praise your preacher or your pastor. All heaven is not going to surround your preacher, your pastor. We're going to surround God Almighty and Jesus Christ. That's going to be a shock to many Baptists. Now, your, your, the preachers, Sunday school teachers, they could preach a message being filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody can get saved. They get the Holy Spirit. They get salvation. That came from God, not from you. When you teach and they learn, when you preach and they learn, they get saved. That ain't you, man. That's the Holy Spirit using you. There are some preachers, their lamps have gone out. Their churches have gone out. All right, that's a spiritual application. But because your pastor's oil has gone out, when the rapture, that doesn't mean he's staying. If he's saved, stay with the context. And again, your pastor, Christians, we are a virgin. We are not virgins. And I know some, well, you know, there's Catholics here. There's the Pentecostals there. There's the Jehovah Witnesses there. There's there's the, the strict Baptists. There's the yellow Baptists, the red Baptists, the blue Baptists, and the Baptist Baptists, Southern Baptists, all kinds. It ain't that. We are one. We are not plural. Israel is plural. There's Israel. There's Judah. There's 12 tribes. There are Israelites who are saved according to the, to the dispensation. And there are Israelites who are going to hell. But the wise answer said, not so, at least there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy yourselves. Okay, let's take Matthew 25. Let's take a church age. Did not. I hate when it comes to my head and then it falls out. There was that man. He possessed the people in the book of Acts. I forget his name now. And he walked up to Peter and he says, Peter. How much will it cost for you to give me the Holy Spirit? Peter says, you child of the devil, you're wicked to think that you can purchase the Holy Spirit. That's what 25.9 is. There are people, the Roman Catholic Church, I can say this, I came out of the Roman Catholic Church. That's one of the churches I mentioned. You can buy your salvation. And if you don't buy your salvation, your widow can buy and light candles and give the priest money for him to pray for you to get out of purgatory. Um, Martin Luther hated the, the, the Roman Catholic teaching of um, penances. You can go do a crime and go to the, the, the priest and give him money and he'll exalt you out of your sin. That's what that is right there. There are some people, they think when they put money in the plate, wherever wherever they are, whatever church or denomination or no denomination, they think they put money in that, that plate, God is pleased, and that's how they're going to get to heaven. That's verse 9. You want to run to the church age. There are preachers that will get up, and there are priests that will get up, and there are bishops that will get up, and there are whatever your clergy's title is, and they will get up and preach a message, hey, give money. You can get saved. Listen, to get saved is to have the Holy Spirit. So whatever denomination you are, if you preach money, you think money will do it. Simon the Sorcerer. That's what his name is. 
Peter said, you're wicked. So if you're going to run to Matthew 25, verse 9, you're going to say it's the church age. Peter says you're wicked. They ran out of oil. They got to go buy it. Elijah, or Elijah, ran into a widow woman. She's out there picking up two sticks. She's going to make a cake for her and her, for her son, and then they're going to die. Elijah, rude as he was, <laughs> you go make you, you go get me a drink and you make me a cake first. <laughs> Somebody would say to me, that was rude. That woman's oil never wasted. The, the, the meal never wasted. That's Old Testament. You don't buy the Holy Spirit. Now, we are in the tribulation period, aren't we? Are we not? Yes, we are. I don't, you don't believe it? I believe it. Matthew 25, Matthew 24, we're in the tribulation period. Now, let me ask you a question. In the tribulation period, how would you have to go buy that oil? you got to receive the mark. You can't buy, you cannot sell unless. They said, rather go sell and buy. The tribulation period, that's the mark. So while they went to go by, they would have to receive the mark. Where are you going to go in the church age to go buy the oil of God? Where would you find in the Bible you have to go buy the oil and they go and buy the oil? The charismatics, they got these, you know, you can buy the little mustard seed and wear it in your necklace. You can buy the little oil from the from the olive tree where Jesus leaned up against and, and preached his message. You can get the sand of where Jesus and all. You, you can buy all that nonsense, but it's not going to get you to heaven. And if this is in the tribulation period, as I believe, it is context of Matthew 24, context of Matthew 25. This does not match the church. If it's a tribulation period, they go and buy. They got to have the mark. Because this is surely after the three and a half years the bridegroom came. That's the seventh year. You are under the realm of the mark of the beast and the Baptist. Oh, I don't want to receive the mark of the beast. Oh, if I go to the 7-Eleven, I'll buy something, and it's 666. I'll take a pack of gum and a lottery ticket so it's not. Man, they gave me a license plate that says 666. It'd be no bother with all the scripture on my car. It'd be a joke. People look at ha, look at the scripture and they gave them 666. Boy, that's wrong. People laugh at that. Oh, I can't take the shot. Because, you know, it, it's got the, the, the ID and all that. I'm going into a nursing home, hopefully, Lord God willing. My mind is going. Praise the Lord for me. And for my family, if they inject something into me that would show where I am. So if I disappear, they can go on the computer screen. Oh, he's down there in the bathroom. He's down there in room 273. Oh, no. He's, he's, how do you get out of the building? Get over there. Go get him. Oh, he received the mark. I'm out of here before the mark. And when, when the rapture happens, if I got something in my right hand that the that, that nursing home and somebody's put inside me or health care, when I rapture, that's going to fall on the sidewalk, the, the, the road, wherever I am. You see, you can't run the church to the tribulation. Oh, we wouldn't do that. Preach Matthew 25 to your church. Patch, preach Matthew 24 to the church. Oh, the earthquakes, oh, the earthquakes. And I say that because of Greece. Hey, there are earthquakes in the tribulation period. And when those earthquakes come to happen, as, as Revelation says, time's coming. Those earthquakes tell you right where you are in the tribulation period. Not today. And they went, and they, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage.
The bride does not walk with the bridegroom into the marriage. The bride is in her room. She's getting dressed. She's getting outfitted. Or right now, you know, she she's she's with her bridesmaid. She's getting fixed up for the for the for the celebration. But that's not how the Jewish wedding works. The Jewish wedding, according to Jacob, the Oriental way of marriage is you have the the celebration, the rehearse. I mean, the 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 the, the food. Before the marriage, then the bride is in the tent, and then the bridegroom is brought into the tent. So, oriental wedding is the, the bride would be in the tent waiting for her groom to come to conceal, to certify the marriage. And I'm not going to say we're going to have marriage bed relationship with Jesus, whereas the angels were not given to marriage. It's not going to work like that. And the door was shut. Well, friend, the lad to see in church age, as soon as the lad to see in church age came to be, the door was open during Philadelphia. The lad to see in church age, the door was shut. And we've been alive to see in church age since the 1900s. 1940s. Friend, Christians are still getting, people are still becoming Christians. People are still getting saved, even if the door is shut and Jesus Christ is knocking on the outside. People are still getting saved. That's not 2510 for the church. The moment that Jesus comes with his church, we're behind him. If you are a Jew in bad standing, you're going to hell. If you are in Celepetra, I said that's the place where they're going to be, and I could be wrong, but let's say Celepetra. If you are in Celepetra and you're hiding out, you're enduring to the end, and Jesus comes, you're, you're coming with us. If you were a Jew and you got the mark, you're not coming. Door shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, the foolish ones. The Lord opened to us. There will be at the second act, there will be people pleading with the lion, the tribe of Judah. No, no, no. In the fire. It's too late. And the book of Revelation also tells us that there will be people still, they're still worshiping their idols and all the nonsense and the witchcraft. When Jesus comes in his fear, they don't care. Let me search here. Let me show you something. Head to Proverbs. Hopefully I can find it. Proverbs 714. That's an interesting number. All right, uh, let's see, where, is she, where should we start? Here's a woman, she's a harlot, verse 10. Well, harlot. Rahab was a harlot and she got in. Rahab's name, Rahab the harlot's name is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Matthew 1. All right, so here she is. Here's this harlot, she grabs men, she sends them to hell. Look at verse 14. I have peace offerings with me. This day I have paid my vow. She's religious. You know how many Jews are going to go to that temple? They're going to do what they're supposed to be, but they ain't got the spirit. And Proverbs will warn you over and over, if you give an offering and you don't have the right heart, uh, the wicked man gives his offering, it, it's an abomination. You go to that temple in the tribulation and you, you supposedly do everything you're supposed to do. You don't have the right heart. You don't have the right aspect. You have the mark. Don't care whatever you say to Jesus. You're not going in the closed door. Verse 12, 25, 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. He's not. He's not. He's not. 
ever going to say that to a Christian? If he does, he's a liar. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. They're in the palm of my hand and no one can pluck them out. And if he says, I never knew you, then Jesus Christ is a liar and Jesus Christ cannot, will not, is unable to lie. That's not church age doctrine. Don't go to your church and come up with a math, with a Matthew 25 message. You're doing great damage to your congregation. You know, there are things, excuse me, use my right. There are things in the Bible you don't need to teach in. You know, there are preachers, and I'm not afraid, but there are preachers who won't say piss in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Bastards in the Bible. Ass, as a donkey. They, they, you know, it's a donkey. I, I use the word ass. How come you will not use biblical words? And your entire ministry, you run to the Hebrew and Greek, and then you go to Matthew 25, Matthew 24, and you'll preach a message out there about the church, and it has nothing, nothing to do with the church. Why is it in there? Not all the Bibles written to the church. The nation of Israel are the primary recipients and the primary scribes of the canon of scriptures. There are there are Baptists today, there are Christians today that there's everything in the Bible is about America. And if you don't change it to listen, I know missionaries who changes the word of God and makes it American. They go on the mission field and they change the mission field to America. You gotta have matchbox cars and Tootsie rolls. That's not Bible. And there's some people, you'll watch African. The, the, the missionaries go over Africa, and, 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 and Africans get saved, and they they boogie-woogie. And you say, oh, that's just wrong. That's dependent. No, 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 no. That's how they worship God. Now, how they worship God may not be the American way, but that's their way. Now, you get the Pentecostals over here acting like they're Africans when they're not Africans. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? You know how I got people upset when we were in Norwich, there was Dodd Stadium. And there was the Norwich something, I don't know, I don't care. We went to that place a couple times. You know how I got people mad? We were sitting in the Norwich, whatever team it was, side. I was rooting for the other team. That caused anger. But well, that's me. You see, you're if you're on one team and it's not your team, you're going to get people upset. And if you go into scriptures teaching something that don't belong, you are out of aspect. You are out of uniform. You are out of context. You're going to get God mad. Watch, therefore. For you know not neither day nor night wherein the Son of Man cometh. That's back in 2436. And that's true for the rapture. We don't know when. Well, it's kind of funny that Jesus says that in the tribulation. We know the tribulation is seven years. We know. Okay. Um. Where does it say? Look at 2422. Do we know? Except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's the word of Jesus. How is Jesus going to do that? I don't know. I just read the scripture. Maybe the tribulation period is seven. Maybe it's not seven years exactly. Or how about this? Let me throw this out and we're closing. Let me throw this out. You Christians are going by a pagan calendar like you do Easter and Damon. There he goes again. Your calendar, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. They are from the Pope, Gregory. There's another calendar that's biblical and right by God. It's called the Jewish calendar. Maybe if you line the Jewish calendar with the Pope calendar, maybe it's not exactly seven years. And maybe seven years on the Pope calendar, maybe not be seven years on the Jewish calendar. Jewish is the moon. The Roman calendar is Baal. Oh, you know Baal is that big yellow thing in the sky. You know the moon because that's the god of Ishmael. Abraham came out of Ur of Chaldees. Ur of Chaldees was the moon god. You know, the cow jumped over the moon. You know, the, the sacred cow of Egypt, the sacred cow of Babylon, the sacred cow of Aaron jumped over the moon of the Milky Way. Maybe the calendar's wrong. And if God doesn't go by the Pope, and he doesn't, then your dating of anything is wrong. I know of 99% of a surety, God will not go by the Pope and his calendar and his religion. And yet the woman... The great whore of Babylon is the Catholic Church. Maybe the world's going by the by the Roman calendar, and maybe God's going by the Jewish calendar, and the Jewish calendar will show the Jews mercy. I just threw that out there. I could be wrong. I, I'm not always right. I don't, don't point, proclaim to be always 100%. If I'm wrong or something, you put it in the comments. I will look at it. I will study. If I'm wrong, I will get down to my knees. I will pray, pray to God and say, God, forgive me. Because I'm wrong sometimes. In the condition and health I am, I'm wrong many times. 